Hello, fellow Raxians. My name is Commander Sirius. There's been a bit of drama lately in the community, and I think a lot of it stems from a misunderstanding. The Lynx Helmet, otherwise known as the Cat Ear Helmet, has been removed from the game, along with all the other creators' creations. It's a confusing decision to some, but if you really want to blame anyone, blame me. Let's talk about why. The bundle for the Planet Side 2 10th Anniversary is a Viking-themed bundle, which you see here is the Inheriar plating on the Valkyrie. In Norse mythology, the Inheriar are the warriors who died fighting bravely and were brought by Valkyries to Valhalla. Now, this bundle and its cosmetics got a lot of hate because recently Daybreak Games said cat helmets are not thematically Planet Side. By the end of this video, I'm going to explain why Vikings work and cat ears don't for Planet Side 2. And if you're interested in this skin and some other cool loot, I'm giving away a Warriors bundle in the comments of this video. Comment in Harriar to be entered in to that bundle raffle. So guys, part of me is like the drama's dead, I shouldn't touch it anymore. But at the same time, every other week, someone posts a meme of the Lynx helmet saying, oh, I can't find this in the store anymore, how do I buy it? So sorry if I'm beating the dead horse, but I feel like a few things didn't get covered. The creator of the cat ear helmet has been trying to get a TR version in the game for a while. The drama arose when he compared this helmet to the new Viking VS helmet, saying that the VS helmet was thematically so far off, why can't a cat helmet go in the game? In a patch not long after, all the creator's items were removed from the store. The Reddit mods trying to explain the situation sticky to post, titled Free the Cat Boys and Cat Girls, which sounded very biased towards the creator. Digging through the creator's posts, though, you can see that this was a very challenging person to work with. Even the iteration you saw earlier was after some tweaks to start moving away from the original extreme cat ear design. And it's made even more complex by this creator trying to ram cat ears onto everything he possibly could. So anyways, let's start with why it's my fault. No, I have never communicated with Rel or anyone at Daybreak Games about cat ears or cosmetics in general. I am not suggesting there is some secret Illuminati Discord where we discuss these things. What I'm suggesting is I'm part of the player base that appreciates some level of artistic integrity. I don't like the pink camo. I don't like masks and helmets that deviate from the battle and sci-fi warfare theme of the game just not my thing. And I don't know if I'm in the majority or the minority, but it doesn't really matter. The place it leaves Daybreak in is they can't go wild with cosmetics without risking alienating part of the player base. The pink camo was a wildly successful camo. It sold very well, earned a lot of revenue. I understand why it happened. I'm not super upset about it. But if they're releasing new gaudy camos or helmets or armors every week, it's going to drive people like me away eventually. We'll get tired of the aesthetic. If you logged into H1Z1, for example, near the end, it had turned into this multicolored clown show because they were grasping at straws for revenues. Daybreak Games has to walk a difficult tightrope of releasing camels that will entice people to buy, and sometimes the wild and gaudy ones are the ones that will do that without totally upending the aesthetic of the game. So for that reason, please... Blame it on me, don't just think they're out there to get someone. People approach this helmet like there's no detractors to it, like it's easy money, easy revenue, why not just throw it in the game? Let's look at the next reason it's difficult. Cat ears are sexual. No, serious, they're cute, they're funny, they're silly, let us have our memes. Seriously though guys, do I need to remind you of Catgirl Spitty Bay fanfic? I understand it's all fun and games to the community, but it's not as simple for the developers of the game to just laugh that off. Part of the reasons cat ears were popularized and became more mainstream was due to the Japanese manga, Loveless, where humans were born with cat ears and tails and would lose them when they lost their virginity. As much as anyone wants to say this is fun, funny, memeing, and antics, there are unfortunately undeniable sexual connotations behind this content 
that are all great and fine for mature adults to flirt around with, but not something that developers of the game want to be seen fostering. Because they do benefit from kids playing the game, and kids are going to browse Reddit and try to learn about the game. With any gaudy cosmetic that's added to the game, there has to be a calculation of does it help the game more than it hurts it. And on the pink camo, it sold so well, I definitely think it helped the game even though it detracted from the aesthetic. Let's run that same calculation on the Lynx helmet. Now, I actually already ran this calculation once. Most of the people only saw the drama through the lens of the post stickied by the mods, but they didn't see the post about a week later, done by a throwaway, we can only assume from the creator, where he is just wildly angry that the community so rapidly forgot about any of this. In the course of the drama, someone had looked through the API to figure out how many of the Lynx helmets have been sold, and the gist of it was to explain just how much revenue this thing was bringing in. But if you actually spend a minute to look at those numbers, you're going to see it doesn't really paint that great of a picture. The Lynx helmet has sold just under 5,000 units in a little over five years. Helmets usually sell for $10, but remember, Daybreak Games only gets to keep 60% of that revenue. On top of that, the earnings could be further reduced by any sales or deals that are going on. So my calculation that throws it at $5,727 a year is wildly optimistic. And most of those units were sold early on in the life of the helmet. Unit sales now are probably way down and the revenue is probably under 500 bucks a year. Set this against the backdrop of Planet Side 2 earning an estimated 8 million in revenue in 2020. That number roughly extrapolated from the filings when EG7 bought Daybreak Games. The earnings on the Lynx helmet is such a tiny fraction of the revenue. These helmets are a headache on so many levels. In no way does the $6,000 they earn remotely make up for it. It's obviously a hard creator to work with, who takes every opportunity he can to trash the game and the devs. They're kind of breaking the rules because they've closed down Player Studio. Why do they keep working with this one creator over a couple random helmets when there's probably a hundred other creators that would like to work on their stuff? They kept relationships with the most prolific, high quality creators like the Dokus, etc. It is a controversial cosmetic, not just for the sexual undertones, also, does it fit Planet Side? When Doku goes makes an armor, it feels very much like it works with this sci-fi battle. So every angle you look at it from, revenue, is it appropriate? Does it match the theme? Is it a person that's easy to work with and we have a long relationship with them that we're willing to break the rule that Player Studio is closed? No, it doesn't pass any of these checks. Daybreak Games is trying to throw the community a bone by saying, okay, we're going to let one of these weird helmets in. But it got to the point where it felt like they were given an inch and people were trying to take a mile to just cram more and more of this stuff into the game. Now, on that note, does Viking stuff work with the game? Yes, Vikings are literally about endless, glorious battle. Their mythology is all about war and how there's no greater honor than to die on the battlefield. And that is what Planet Side 2 is all about. Sure, it's old mythology rather than future sci-fi, but that is a much smaller leap than cat girls getting violated by Spitfire turrets. In the game, we already have the Molnir. We already have Valkyries. We already have Viking-themed outfits that you could even see playing in Outfit Wars. We've got the frozen wastelands of Esamir reminiscent of the frozen tundras of the north. And we've already done the other themes. We have the Endeavor series. That's kind of the sci-fi space combat pew-pew bundle, which is still my favorite. We've got the pirate theme that came out with Osher and made a lot of sense. Is Vikings the one I would have picked for the 10 year anniversary? No, not necessarily. I would have liked stuff that was a little more throwbackish to Planet Side 1, or maybe to the original launch of Planet Side 2, something like that. But all that said, Vikings make a lot of sense. On top of that, when this bundle was getting released, it was right when the God of War game was getting released. So there's tons of Viking-themed advertisement going on that they basically get to tag onto. So anyways, guys, yes, the bottom line is Vikings make a lot more sense 
than Catgirl helmets for Planet Side 2, no matter how you spin it. I am a little bummed that the sort of drama surrounding this really put a distaste in a lot of people's mouths for the bundle, because I can tell the artists actually worked really hard on it and did a lot of research to try to make it Viking themed. The Vandal has a full kit of attachments that fit the theme, along with all the other cool Valkyrie skins. Yes, it's the Valkyrie, right? It all makes sense. Light assault armor, again, angels flying down to the battlefield. All of this time and energy went into making a very cool bundle that has unfortunately been soured over this little incident. I hope to in a future video really dive into some of the detail and cool artwork they did for this bundle. But in the meantime, make sure you get in the raffle by putting that comment in below. The keyword is on screen at the beginning of this video. Now, if you are watching this video right when it came out, I am actually currently live on Twitch discussing topics like this, doing an extra life fundraiser for the kids and just chilling with the planet side two peeps for the new year. Happy new year's all. So I would love to see you come share your opinion on this. Come say happy new year's or come play with us. You'll be able to join me in game. Just figure out what server faction I am on. But that is where I'm going to leave this topic for now. I am sorry if it was already relegated to waste bin and I necroed it. But especially after that later post got nuked by the mods. And for good reasons, it was a throwaway account. The mods were really saving him from himself with that, getting it deleted very quickly. I just wanted to clear it up for some people that are still stuck with a misunderstanding regarding why Daybreak Games decision was the best one that could have been made. That'll be all for now, fellow Raxians, and I hope to see you right now, Planetside.